Hey, this is David and Tabitha Aaron here from Second Wind Ministries. I uh, just want to give you a brief testimony of last Saturday at August 13th in Charlotte. We went down to Trade and Tryon Street, had a wonderful time. I want to talk to you all about commitment. There might be some of you who have tried street ministry before and only did it one time and you thought, well, it was okay, but you didn't do it again and just thought that was it. And I just want to say to you, as me and Tabitha have been both going out each and every week, you know, some others have been coming out with us, Michael Brown and um, has been coming out with us as well. And uh, as you go out each week, it gets better and better, and God starts using you in the gifts. And um, the one thing recently God used me was um, in the gift of word of knowledge. And uh, also Tabitha and I both, when we went Saturday morning, our prayers, we noticed, were more fervent on fire, and people were receiving it. They were being affected by it and blessed. So um, each time you go out, as you keep going out, you know, by the third, fourth, fifth time, as you keep going out, it just gets better and better and better. And God sees that you're faithful, and when you're faithful, He's faithful to you. And he's faithful even when we're not, but we have to go out. We have to continually go out. We can't just do it one time, and then that's it. So, um, you know, Saturday uh, we went out on the street and fed the homeless. We took out, was it 21 bags? Yeah. 21 bags of lunch bags with sandwiches and um, snacks and uh, Arizona teas and bottled water. And um, Friday morning, the day before when I woke up, I had received a word of knowledge and God had spoken to me and just said ruptured disc, herniated disc. And I do Uber at night uh, in Charlotte with my car, and I thought maybe that night I was going to, you know, God was going to bring someone my way that had herniated disc in the back and lay hands on them, they'd be healed. But it didn't happen that way, but when we went to Feed the Homeless Saturday morning, at the very end of our meeting there, uh, after we prayed for people and gave out all the food, I went to my car a few blocks away to pick it up, it was at a parking meter, and this man started walking towards me. He had asked me if I had a dollar, and I said, no, I have some pennies in my pocket. I could give to him, I gave him what I had. And um, I asked him why he was limping, was it his leg? And he said, no, I've got herniated disc in my back. So it was pretty awesome, and I was able to ask him if I could pray for him. He asked if I was a follower of Christ. I said, yes, I am a follower of Christ. And again, it was this fervent prayer. It was just on fire. I prayed for him, he started like, um, moaning, he started feeling the power hit his back, and everything I was saying, he, he was just receiving a mm, mm you know, he was just like, he was just receiving it, and uh, it was an elderly gentleman, and um, when I was done the prayer, and he started walking away, I said, do you feel anything? Do you feel any better? And he says, I feel a lot better. So, uh, we just give God the praise, and we just um, just say that, again, like, if if you've done it one time and that was the only time you did it, maybe you went out with a team or with a church or even just by yourself and you're just like, oh, that was okay, but I don't know if I want to keep doing this. I encourage you to keep doing it and be committed because as you keep going, God will bring more to you. He'll bring more gifts to you. He'll, he'll bring more power to your prayers and he'll open up doors where um, no man can open and shut doors no man can close. He's faithful. And Tal, do you have anything to say? Um, I just want to say that um, I agree with everything David said and that um, when we first started going, people were a little weary, you know, as we talked about in one of the first videos, they didn't really know us and it was hard to give anything out, but as they see us coming more and more, they, uh, you know, we've gained their trust and they know us now on a first name basis, we know them and they look forward to us coming. You know, they know that we're gonna be there or that we try our best to be there. And not that we're trying to make anyone dependent on just us alone or anything like that, but, you know, we, we let them know that, you know, we will try our best to be there and the time and the day and everything. So they've learned to know that, you know, we are doing our best and that we keep try to keep our word, you know, to the best of our ability. So they have uh, gained trust in us and now they're, they readily take you know, food. You know, you think with being homeless that they would take anything from anybody be just for the fact that maybe they're hungry or whatever. But it's not really like that. I mean, homeless people, they have, um, I don't say pride, like in the wrong way, but 
you know, they're people too, and they have feelings and emotions and thoughts and fears and, and worries just like the rest of us. So, um, you know, they they have that about themselves, and they care about each other. So some of them do, some of them, you know, don't. They keep to themselves, but a good bit of them, they're like a family, you know, and they care about each other and protect each other. So um, they are now more receptive. They trust us and more people are coming and they're getting to know us through word of mouth. And when we first started, um, my husband and I, you know, and Michael Brown, our friend who goes with us, we all pitch in and, you know, pay for the cost of the food, um, which is not a problem. I mean, we want to do that, but we're just going on what we have, you know, and, and out of Michael's pocket as well. And But the Lord gives it to us each week to be able to give. and sometimes it just meets just the right amount of people you know we don't have any less or any more and uh, it's just just enough but each week I notice <clears throat> excuse me that it's growing you know that more people are coming and you kind of worry like how am I going to meet the need of all these people or how will we have enough but just like in the Bible you know when Jesus prayed over the uh, fishes and the loaves you know in the basket there was enough for everybody and I think there was even you know leftover food mm -hmm. so uh, sometimes that's even been the case where some people have gotten to take another bag with another sandwich or snacks you know a couple of them have because there's been extra and uh, it just you know that's the way it goes the Lord sees the need he puts on our heart about how much to make and it, it just turns out and the people show up and uh, and he's been providing us you know the income to be able to do it you know, we don't take any credit for that, and I'm sure our friend doesn't either. You know, uh, we're all you know try to be pretty humble about it, and we know it's nothing of ourselves, and we just love people. And it's and it's also just not about the homeless people. We we have met other people while out there. They pass by, and and there's just so many people. You can't you know talk to all of them, but um, the door just opens. You get to meet people and talk to people, and things happen. You know, God's there. And he's faithful. Yeah, and um, also I was talking about earlier about the commitment. Uh, there was a missionary from Assembly of God Church years ago. Me and Tabitha went to this church back in Baltimore area. And uh, he gave a testimony about how he was going to men's prison and um, doing prison ministry. And the very first time he went, it was to a men's penitentiary in Richmond, Virginia. And when he went, uh, the correctional officer let him in and said, you got 45 minutes. And so he went in there, and all the inmates were in this like rec room, and they had a TV blasting, and um, he tried to preach from felt led of the Lord to preach from John 3:16, and as he started speaking it out, uh, this one man, like the biggest man in this in this penitentiary, just blew raspberries at him and turned the TV way up, and this preacher just wanted to get out of there, <laughs> you know, and this was his first time, so he tried to get out. And, had the correctional officer open up the door and the correctional officer said, correctional officer said nope, you got 45 minutes. And so he had to stay in there and uh, when he let him out, he went back home and he said, Lord, I'm never going to do that again. And so, uh, but then the following week, God just put in his spirit to go back. So he went back the second time and the same thing happened. You know, the guy like blew up raspberries at him, turned the TV up and nobody listened to what he had to say. And he said, God, I'm definitely not coming back. This has to be you. You know, there's no way I'm going back to this place again. But God put it in his spirit again to go back the third week. And so he went, when he went back the third time, the correctional officer let him in. He started preaching John 3.16. And that man at Blue Raspberries had turned the TV up. He yelled at everybody to be quiet and listen to this man. They turned the TV off. And everybody listened to what he had to say. He preached John 3.16, and I think some people might have got saved. I heard a story years ago. But um, this preacher, this missionary, went up to the men and said, What made it different? Why did you listen now? And he said, Because you came back. He says, and the man, this prisoner said, I can't tell you how many preachers come in here, and they come just once, and we know that they're just here for money or for some other reason, and then they don't come back. They don't really care about us but you came back, and that's why we listened to you. And so I just wrote that story in my heart and kept it in my heart for years because it is about commitment. 
and um, not only does God want to see you be faithful, people out there want to see that you're faithful and know that you're for real. So uh, if you've been blessed by this video, we pray that you keep watching our videos, uh, like this video, subscribe to us, and we're going to try to put out a video every week and uh, pray for us. We ask for your prayers. Yes. Uh, if you can give to us and you feel led to give, eventually we'll put up something, either PayPal or um, GoFundMe, maybe on a Facebook page. But uh, anyway, we're David and Tabitha Aaron, Second Wind Ministries, and we all love you all, and God bless you all. I want to say one more thing, if I could. Um, some of the, the homeless people that we've met, they have phones, and they've asked how they can find our channel. So in case any of you are watching these videos, we just want to say hi to you and let you know that uh, we do think of you. And uh, just as we promised, you know, we have everybody's names written down in a book at home. And, we pray for you and think of you and you're in our hearts and we feel like you're part of our family because that's what ministry is really about and you know to love each other in this world you know if more love was shown it'd be a, it'd be a much better world and uh, I know there's a lot of people that do good things and humanitarian relief and they help and and you know praise God for that you know there's a lot of good people in this world but you know, don't be afraid to reach out, whether it's a homeless person or anybody, you know, just when you feel that prompting, you know, reach out and wonderful things will happen. You'll be amazed. But I just want to give a shout out to them and also uh, to ask those of you that watch this video, um, I have an urgent prayer request from one of them. Uh, his name is Buddy and he asked for prayers for his wife. Her name is Shay. And I won't go into all the details, but she recently had to have an operation and she's having some complications that have caused an infection and various other things. Um, so if you could please pray for Shay. Uh, they, they are believing for um, a home. Uh, Buddy had a dream that God gave them a home and he described it to me in detail. And uh, a confirmation that, he's, that had happened after that, that confirmed to him, you know, he's a believer, him and his wife. and. Um, so just please pray for them for that and for, for income and for her for healing because um, I can tell that he loves her dearly and you know just because they're out on the street it doesn't mean they have any less feelings or, or love for one another or other people so or love for God for that matter so um, please pray for them and, and please pray for the homeless because yeah, they, they need it so we love you all thank love you love you God bless bye bye